Hello and welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to clear up some confusing vocabulary, so let's get started. Today we're looking at these two words, pray and pray. They're both pronounced exactly the same, but they mean different things. First, let's look at this pray. This pray can be a noun. For example, I have predator and prey. The cat is the predator and the mouse is the prey. The idea, the cat is hunting the mouse in order to eat it. So again, the cat is the predator, pronunciation, predator. The T is pronounced as a fast D, predator, predator. The cat is a predator because the cat is hunting the mouse. So what is a mouse? The mouse is its prey. Let's practice. Is the cat the predator or the prey? That's right, the cat is the predator. So who's the prey? Is the mouse the prey? That's right, the mouse is the prey. Or talking about possession of the cat, the mouse is its prey. And there's a phrasal verb, prey on. The cat preys on the mouse because the mouse is the cat's prey. We have a phrasal verb, prey on. The cat preys on the mouse. Let's practice. Does the cat prey on the mouse? That's right, the cat preys on the mouse. And we also use it for people. Example, there was a serial killer, and the serial killer preyed on young single women. That's who he tried to kill. We use it here too. The serial killer preyed on young single women. Let's practice. Did the serial killer prey on young single women? That's right, the serial killer preyed on young single women. Now let's talk about this prey. The same pronunciation, prey, use the long A like day and say, prey, and the preposition is for. We say pray for. You pray for something. You ask God for something, you pray for something. Example, I can pray for world peace. Please God, bring world peace. I pray for world peace. That's pray for. Example, he's praying for world peace. Pray, with I-N-G, praying, praying. Link the vowels. He's praying for world peace. Let's practice. What is he praying for? Is he praying for world peace? That's right, he's praying for world peace. And we pray in different situations. For example, before you go to bed, it's customary to say your prayers. Now we have the noun prayer, prayer. You have the air sound like hair and chair. Prayer. Not prayer, but prayer. Before going to bed, kids say their prayers. She's saying her prayers before she goes to bed. Let's practice. Is she saying her prayers? That's right, she's saying her prayers. Does she always say her prayers before going to bed? That's right, she always says her prayers before going to bed. And also before eating. Before eating, we say a prayer. If I'm eating with you, I can say, hey, would you like to say the prayer? I use the article the, say the prayer. But we also use different expressions. We say, say grace. Would you like to say grace? That means, would you like to pray before we eat? You say grace, use the verb say. Or I can say, give the blessing. We use the verb give, give the blessing. Would you like to give the blessing? And that means, would you like to pray before we eat? So we have different ways of saying it before eating. Example, they're saying the prayer before eating. Let's practice. Are they saying the prayer before eating? That's right, they're saying the prayer before eating. But it's more common to say this, they're saying grace. They're saying grace before eating. Let's practice. Are they saying grace before eating? That's right, they're saying grace before eating. Or I can say, give the blessing. They're giving the blessing. They're giving the blessing before the meal. Let's practice. Are they giving the blessing before the meal?
That's right, they're giving the blessing before the meal. What about this word? What's a word you call a prayer, especially one that's formal or ceremonial in nature? Orison. She murmured a quiet orison for her loved one's recovery as she lit a candle in the church. Orison? I have never heard this word in my life. I have never heard anyone say orison. I'm sure it exists, but I've never heard anyone say it. So don't say that word. Say pray in prayer. Don't say orison. So remember, pray and pray. They both have the same pronunciation, but they're used in different ways. Thank you for watching, and keep watching for more confusing vocabulary. Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're gonna to learn to avoid some important mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. Another great word to know, arduous. Again, when you say it's arduous, that means it requires a lot of effort, strength, and energy. You can say, I don't want to do my homework, it's arduous. Look at this task, I have to write a 20-page letter to my friend. The pronunciation of this word is not arduous. We don't say arduous, the pronunciation is arduous. Arduous, and it means very hard. Arduous. The DU makes the J sound like jump and juice. Arju. We use a long OO like food and boot. OO together. Arju. Arduous. Arduous. The last syllable is relaxed. Us, us, us. And when you link the OO to the US, there's a sound that links the vowels. It's like a W. It's the W, w sound. So together, arduous. Arduous. Example, they went on a long, difficult journey. They went on an arduous journey. It was an arduous journey. It was very long and very difficult. Let's practice. Was it an arduous journey? That's right, it was an arduous journey. And so the twins and I began an arduous journey halfway around the world. My only hope now is that you receive this letter before you depart and that my words will accompany you on your arduous journey back home. This is also not correct. Another great phrase, it's grueling. That means that something is extremely difficult and tiring and it requires a lot of time and energy. A good example of using this word would be talking about some kind of sport or marathon or a competition. I'm going to take part in a 156 mile run next year. Oh my God, it's grueling. Are you gonna do that? We don't pronounce this word grueling. It's not grueling, it's grueling, grueling. The first vowel is the long oo, like food and boot, gru, grueling, grueling. And it means very, very hard, like torture. He worked over 12 hours today. It was a long, grueling day. He had a grueling day at work today. It was a long, grueling day. Let's practice. He worked over 12 hours today. Was it a long, grueling day? That's right. It was a long, grueling day. After the grueling regular basketball season, we're now in month nine of the playoffs. So we look at these two words arduous and grueling. Are they really better than hard? No, they're not. Don't stop saying hard. Keep saying hard if you want to sound natural. Because if you use these words and use them incorrectly, if you mispronounce them, people aren't going to understand you. These words are good to know, but they're not better than hard. The word hard is more natural, more common, and it's easier to pronounce. If you use hard, You'll avoid mispronouncing these words like arduous and grueling. The other night, it's hard to explain it, but it won't happen again. Sometimes it's hard to know what that is. It's hard to find someone to talk to, you know? It's hard to look back and see the truth about people you love. He worked really hard for that house. Grace, I know talking like this is really hard, but I worked really hard to get you into that school. This is also not correct. So this implies that this race is going to be hard, difficult, will take long time to run, and a lot of energy, of course. I cannot say will take long time to run. I have to use an article. 
In this case, time is countable. I have to say, uh, a long time. Together, it will take a long time to run. We have to use the article, uh. Example, if you run a marathon, will it take a long time to run? That's right. If you run a marathon, it will take a long time to run. It'll take a long time, a real long time. It'll take a long time. It takes a long time for you to learn. Weeks, months, maybe. It takes a long time. Does it happen all at once? Or it takes a long time? It's very frustrating when it takes a long time. And it took a long time, but I finally found someone who believed me. We're really sorry, but this letter for you was in a fire a couple years ago. So it took a long time for us to get it to you. This is also not correct. It is advisable that you replace words with synonyms because they have slightly different meaning and slightly different mood to them, which means your speech will be more beautiful. I cannot say they have slightly different meaning and slightly different mood to them. The words meaning and mood are both countable, so I have to say a. Uh. I have to use an article. So it's correct to say they have a slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood to them. We have to use the article a uh for both words, meaning and mood. A slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood. Or you can change the words to plural because they're countable. I can say they have slightly different meanings and slightly different moods to them. Because these words are countable, I have to use the article a uh, or I have to make the nouns in the plural form. The best option is to use a. Uh. So it's correct to say they have a slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood to them. This is also not correct. So basically, it takes us a lot of time and effort to take her there, to explain her what would be going on. I cannot say explain her what would be going on. After explain, I have to use to. I have to say explain to her. Explain to her what would be going on. We see the pronunciation is not to her, but to, to, explain to her. We have to use the preposition to, pronounced to. Explain to her what would be going on. Or I can use an object. I can say explain something to her. Example, she needs to explain something to her. I cannot say she needs to explain her something. If you have an object, like something, it has to go immediately after the verb. She needs to explain something to her. Remember, you cannot say explain her something. Explain something to her. Again, she needs to explain something to her. Remember, put the object directly after the verb and use the preposition to. She needs to explain something to her. Let's practice. Does she need to explain something to her? That's right. She needs to explain something to her. So remember, this question is incorrect. I cannot say, can you explain me something? No, it's not. We say, can you explain something to me? The order is important. And don't forget the preposition to with the verb explain. You didn't love her and you didn't have to explain to her family. I'm trying to explain to her what DNA was. I wanted her to hear my voice and try to explain to her why I did this. This is also not correct. Sewing is a very laborious process. Pay attention to how sewing is pronounced. In America, we don't say process. We say process. Use the short ah sound like hot and stop. The open sound, ah, pra, process. We say process in American English. Example, learning a second language is a long process. Let's practice. Is learning a second language a long process? That's right. Learning a second language is a long process. It can take your whole life. You know, it's a long process. And, uh, you know. Yeah. I know that this has been a long process for you, but when it comes to the best interests of the children who come before this court, we always err on the side of caution. No lawyer, no witnesses. What sort of due process is this? You know, it's going to be a long process, and it's going to cost quite a bit of money. This is also not correct. And uh, even if you do not intend to use these phrases, it is good to know what they mean. It's not correct to say, even if you do not intend to use these phrases, it is good to know what they mean. I cannot say, 
This phrases. This phrases? This is singular, and phrases is plural. So I have to say these phrases. Let's look at the difference between this for singular and these for plural. They sound similar, but they are different. So let's look at the difference. When I say the word this for something singular, I use the short I sound, like is and in. I, I. The mouth is slightly open, I, I. and you make a short sound, I, I, this. And the S is a true S. There's no voice, there's no vibration. S together, this, this. But when I say these for something plural, these, I use the long E, like green beans. The mouth is more closed. And you smile a little bit. E, the, these. And the S makes a Z sound, like zebra. Z. You have a voice. You have vibration. Z. These. These phrases. More than one. I cannot say this phrases. I say these phrases. Are these phrases supposed to mean something to me? I want you to listen to this phrase I have up on the board. It's... The courts seem to stress this phrase. We find this phrase making you an offer. What's this phrase? This is also not correct. Uphill both ways. You know, I can say it was so hard to get a Fulbright scholarship in an American university. I had to write an essay. I had to do this, this, and that. And somebody from the 80s might answer, I went uphill both ways to get into a university in the US because now you have internet. Now you have YouTube with free resources on how to get a Fulbright scholarship and I didn't have it. You cannot say I went uphill both ways to get into a university. Say, it was difficult to get into a university. Or, I worked very hard to get into a university. You can say, it was challenging. It was very challenging to get into a university. But you cannot say, I went uphill both ways to get into a university. So what is uphill both ways? Uphill both ways is a joke. It's a story older people would tell younger people. To tell them about how difficult their life was when they were younger. It goes like this. When I was your age, I used to walk to school every day in the snow, and it was uphill both ways. You see, it's a joke. It's impossible. It cannot be uphill both ways. They're trying to emphasize how difficult it was. But this is a joke. It's not an expression that you can use instead of, it's hard. Let's hear another good teacher, Bob the Canadian, explain this. Another funny phrase that you might hear every once in a while is the phrase, uh, when I was a kid, I had to walk to school uphill both ways. Um, this is something we sometimes say to be funny. Um, sometimes when kids complain about their life, maybe they complain because the Wi-Fi is too slow or something else that might seem silly to an older person. Uh, you might just say, hey, when I was a kid, I used to have to walk to school uphill both ways. It's a little bit of a joke, um, but it just highlights that kids these days sometimes complain too much. Keep watching to practice with these words and more. Today we're going to practice with different pronunciations of words like these following their spelling patterns and pronunciation patterns. And we're going to pay attention to the difference between the dark L and the light L and practice with both. Let's get started. First we see this word, cruel. We see the U-E-L at the end. We do not pronounce it cruel. We're not pronouncing the E. We're pronouncing the U-E together as the sound U. Cru. Leaking it to a dark L. Cruel. It sounds like pool and cool. You have the long oo sound followed by the dark L. Pool, cool. And this word is cruel. It's the opposite of kind. It means to be very mean to somebody. You are cruel to somebody. Don't be cruel to other people. Be kind. So the dark L is the same position as a light L. You put the tongue up, touching the roof of your mouth, not your teeth behind your teeth, and what's different is your tongue is not straight. It goes a little high in the back, oh, oh. and the bottom of the tongue expands. It gets bigger to make the dark L. So cruel, oh, oh, oh. that's the dark L. Cruel, and it's not cruel. There's kind of an extra sound, and where it comes from is when you say ooh, your mouth is in a more closed position. 
crew. And when you make the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit. Oh, oh. So when you link those sounds, when the mouth opens a little bit, you get a little bit of an extra sound. But it's not a, uh, it's not an extra vowel. It's one vowel. Cool. Oh. Your mouth opens and you make an extra little sound. Cruel. Like pool and cool. Example, this boy is not kind to animals. He's cruel to animals. Use the preposition to, pronounced t, cruel to, cruel to animals. This boy is cruel to animals. Let's practice. Is this boy cruel to animals? That's right. He's cruel to animals. He's not a nice boy. Now let's look at this word with a similar spelling pattern and a similar pronunciation. Gruel. Again, we see the U-E-L making the long oo sound followed by a dark L, just like in the words pool and cool. Gruel. Gruel is a kind of food. It can be made like oatmeal, but it's not so thick. It's usually thinner. And in America, it's known for being bad. It's not a good food. So if you want to complain about some food that you don't like, it's very soupy and thin, you can say, this stuff tastes like gruel. I'm not eating this. Example, I don't want gruel for breakfast. I want something better. I want a better breakfast. What about you? Do you want gruel for breakfast or do you want something better? Very good. Now let's compare these two words. Gruel is a kind of food. It ends with a dark L because the L is after a vowel. It's at the end of the word after a vowel. That's when you use a dark L. Gruel. But if I put ing after it, now I have an L between vowels. If you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L. So it's a little different. Grueling, ling, grueling. What's different? Well, the light L, you don't expand at the bottom of the tongue. You don't raise the back of the tongue. You just make it straight. Uh, uh. The tip of the tongue is in the same position. It's touching the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth, but not touching your teeth. Uh, uh, grueling, grueling. Use the long oo, and when it connects, when it links to the light L, it sounds a little different. Listen, gruel and grueling. It's not so dark. Grueling. Now, grueling is completely different from gruel. Grueling is an adjective. It's to describe something that's very, very difficult. It's not just hard. It's so difficult that it's like torture. It's similar to something that's like punishing you. Very difficult. Example, running a marathon is grueling. It's very, very difficult. It's like torture. It's punishing. What do you think? Is running a marathon grueling? That's right. Running a marathon is grueling. Also notice with the U-E-L, we don't say U-L. It's not grueling. It's grueling. Use the long U plus the light L. Grueling. It's grueling. It's horrible. Now let's take a closer look at the difference between the light L and the dark L. We see with these two words, listen and allow, we use the light L. How do you know? Well, when you have an L at the start of a word before a vowel, that's a light L. L, -l listen, listen. The tongue is touching the roof of your mouth right behind the teeth. Listen. And the tongue is flat and straight. It's not raised in the back. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's just straight. Listen. And with the word allow, you see the L, here the double L, is between vowels. When you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L also. Allow, allow. Now let's look at these two words, call and milk. These are both dark L's because you have the L at the end of the word after a vowel. After a vowel, we use a dark L. Call. After a vowel at the end of the word, we use the dark L. Call. Or if the L is after a vowel but before a consonant. It's not between vowels. It's between a vowel and a consonant. The L is after a vowel, but before a consonant. This is also a dark L. Mil, milk. It's not milk, it's milk. Oh, oh. 
the tongue gets fatter at the bottom, it expands, and it goes up a little bit in the back. Mm -mm. Milk. The L in milk is also a dark L. Now let's look at other words ending in U-E-L and see the different pronunciations we have. The first word is dual. Dual. We see U-E-L making the same sound as before, like pool and cool. Dual. And it ends with a dark L. Because the L is after a vowel at the end of a word. Dual. This is a dual. They're fighting a dual. And you can also use dual as a verb and add ing. They're dueling. Now what changed? Now the L in dueling is between vowels. So we have to change that L to a light L. So it's not dueling, it's dueling, dueling. They're dueling. Somebody's going to die. It's not a good idea. They shouldn't duel. So see the difference? Duel with a dark L and dueling with a light L. Because the L is between vowels in the word dueling. And it's not dueling. Don't pronounce that E. It's one sound. Ooh, plus a dark L. Duel and dueling. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they dueling? That's right, they're dueling. Not a good idea. They should solve their conflict some other way. Now let's look at this word, fuel. We see the same spelling pattern, U-E-L at the end, but this one's a little different. We're going to use the I sound. F, fuel. Not fool, but fuel. We have the same long U sound after the Y, so it's U, plus the dark L. Fuel. Fuel. Not fuel. Remember, when you link the oo plus the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit, but it's not a real syllable. It's like this. Fuel. Fuel. This is fuel. And fuel can be a verb, too. I can say they're fueling the jet. They're putting fuel in the jet. So I can say they're fueling the jet. Now we see the word fueling with the L between vowels. So it's a light L now. It's a little different fueling. Not fueling, but fueling. The light L is straighter. Uh, uh, fueling. They're fueling the jet. We can't leave yet because they're still fueling the jet. Let's practice. Can we leave or are they still fueling the jet? That's right. We can't leave yet. They're still fueling the jet. So let's review all the words we've learned that end with U-E-L. The first one was cruel, then gruel, also dual and fuel. We see with the first three, they're pronounced pretty much the same. Cruel, gruel, and dual. They all have the oo sound plus a dark L, ool, like pool and cool. But remember, with fuel, we have the same spelling pattern, but the pronunciation's a little different. We put that y sound in there, fi, fi, fuel. So all four words, cruel, gruel, dual, and fuel. Now let's look at a different spelling pattern with the same pronunciation. This word, jewel, it's pronounced the same as cool and pool. You have the long oo sound plus the dark L. There's no extra vowel. It's not jewel, it's jewel, like pool and cool. Make the long oo sound plus a dark L, ooh. The mouth opens a little bit, makes a little extra sound, jewel, jewel. This is a jewel. A ruby, for example, a ruby is a jewel. And if I make something with this jewel, I call it jewelry. So the first sound, jewel, plus re, together, jewel, re. And what about the L, does it change? No, it doesn't change. It's still a dark L because you have the L before a consonant. The L is not between vowels. When the L is between vowels, that's a light L. But this is still a dark L. Just like jewel, the L stays the same in jewelry. Let's practice. What is a ruby? That's right. A ruby is a jewel. And what about this? Is this expensive jewelry? That's right. This is expensive jewelry. That was difficult. 
Let's do something a little easier. Let's look at these words. These words are all the same. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. You see the same spelling, double O plus L, and the same pronunciation. It's the long oo sound plus the dark L. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. Now let's change one word. Let's change cool to cooling. Now the L in cooling, is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So let's hear the difference. Cool has a dark L at the end, but cooling has a light L. Do you hear the difference? Cool, cooling, cooling. Not cooling, but cooling. The tongue is straighter. The tongue is straighter and thinner. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's not coming up at the bottom. It's just straight. Example, this is a cooling system, and it's a very complex cooling system. I don't understand how it works. It's really complex. It's a complex cooling system. Let's practice. Is this a complex cooling system? That's right. This is a complex cooling system. Now we see another spelling pattern. U-L-E. The first word is rule. But the second word is not mule, it's mule. So it's a little different. Let's talk about mule. What is a mule? A mule is an animal. It's a mix of a horse and a donkey. The horse and the donkey get married and they have a baby. And that baby is a mule. It looks a little like a horse and a little like a donkey. That's a mule. And it doesn't matter if it's a boy mule or a girl mule. We call them both mules. And here's a fun fact. If you get two mules together, they cannot have babies. They cannot have children. It's impossible. Only a horse and a donkey can make a mule. And they're hard workers, but they're kind of stupid. They're kind of slow. But mules work hard. They're more popular in the southern states in the United States. The southern part of the United States has a lot of mules. Let's practice. Do mules work hard? That's right. Mules work hard. So remember, mule has the y, y sound. M -y mule. Finish with a dark L because the L is at the end of the word after a vowel. Mule. Now let's talk about rule. With rule, we don't say rule. There's no y. It's just ru, dark L, o, rule. Example, you need to follow the rules. But what if I change the word rule to ruler? Now the L is different. Is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So it's not ruler, it's ruler. Ruler. Use a light L. It's straighter. L -l -l ruler. Ruler. And what is a ruler? A ruler is a measuring device like this. In America, it's 12 inches or one foot. You also have centimeters on an American ruler, but the length is always one foot. If you go to other countries, you might find a ruler that's 20 centimeters. It's a little shorter, but it's still a ruler. I used to use rulers in school. When I was in school, I used a ruler. What about you? Did you use a ruler when you were in school? Very good. So we see the L's are different there. When you said school, you used a dark L because the L is at the end of the word after a vowel. School. And when you said ruler, you used a light L because the L is between vowels. Very good. Also remember, a ruler is always a stick. If it's longer, a longer stick. For example, this is a yardstick. It's three feet in the United States, 36 inches. And if it's not a stick, then it's called a tape measure or a measuring tape, not a ruler. But there's another kind of ruler. Also, a king can be a ruler, an emperor, a czar. They can all be rulers. For example, Napoleon. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Let's practice. Was Napoleon the ruler of France? That's right. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Now let's look at words ending in U-L-E 
that have multiple syllables. They're not one syllable words like rule and mule. They have multiple syllables. First, let's talk about this word because it has two different pronunciations. Some people stress the first syllable only and some people stress both syllables. If you stress both syllables, you say schedule, schedule, and you say schedule, 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 schedule. Let's hear some examples. To stay on schedule for the test, you're going to have to be finished in eight days, okay? Okay. The Death Star will be completed on schedule. Everyone in favor of changing the schedule, please raise your hand. But, um, what if your schedule changes? And some people pronounce it differently. They say schedule, schedule. And they put the stress only on the first syllable. Schedule. Let's hear some examples. You know, I'm sure having a schedule where it's not hectic. So it's the shooting schedule for the day that Celia died. What about next week? What's your schedule like? Okay, then let's talk about coming up with a schedule for visitation rights. Call my secretary and have her schedule a lunch. Finish the work schedule for next week. Did it I type up the schedule for the trucking fleet. So in both pronunciations, we end with a dark L because the L is after a vowel at the end of the word. Schedule. Schedule. One is longer. Schedule. And it has an extra sound. It's not like pool and cool. It's schedule. Oh, oh, oh. There's an extra vowel there. Or you can make it short and say schedule. Schedule. Also, we notice the D-U making the J sound, like in juice and jump. J -j -j -j. Schedule or schedule. Example, I have a flexible work schedule. What about you? Do you have a flexible work schedule? Very good. Now let's change the word with I-N-G. Scheduling. Scheduling. He has some scheduling conflicts. Pronunciation. When I say schedule, I have a dark L. But when I say scheduling, is it dark or light? That's right, it's light because the L is between vowels. Scheduling. So you can say scheduling with the stress on the first syllable. Scheduling. Or you can say scheduling and make it longer on the second syllable. Scheduling. But in both words, the L is a light L because it's between vowels. Let's practice. Does he have any scheduling conflicts? That's right. He has some scheduling conflicts. He needs to fix his schedule. And we have this word, module. With module, the stress is on the first syllable. So the second syllable is short. Module. And we see the D makes the J sound, like juice and jump. Module. D-U in the middle of the word usually makes the J sound. So a module can be a lesson in a teaching or training system. Example, she's working on module two. She's still working on module two. And we see with the word, we use the dark L because it's after a vowel at the end of the word. Module. She's still working on module two. Let's practice. Is she still working on module two? That's right. She's still working on module two. She's not finished yet. And this is also a module. This is a lunar module. They landed on the moon in the lunar module. This thing is called a lunar module. Let's practice. What do you call this? What is it called? That's right. It's called a lunar module. And this word is capsule. Again, the stress is on the first syllable, so the second syllable is short. It's not capsule, it's capsule, with a dark L at the end. Capsule. So we see the medicine is available in tablets and capsules. The tablet is the round one, and the capsule is the one that looks like a cylinder. One tablet or two capsules. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. Let's practice. Is the medicine available in tablets and capsules? That's right. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. So you have a choice. Now let's look at this word. This word is ridicule. We see the stress on the first syllable and the third syllable. So we pronounce it long. It's not ridicule or ridicule. 
It's ridicule. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L at the end of the word. Ridicule. Ridicule is a verb. It means to make fun of someone or to make someone look ridiculous. It's not nice to ridicule people. And if I change the verb with ing, ridiculing. Is the L a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. It's different. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. You still have the long oo sound. Ridicule. Remember with the e sound. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. The boy is ridiculing the girl. It's not nice to ridicule people. Let's practice. Is it nice to ridicule people? That's right. It's not nice to ridicule people. And is the boy ridiculing the girl? That's right. The boy is ridiculing the girl. Now let's look at this word. Ridiculous. The stress moved to the second syllable. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. It's not you. It's ridiculous. You still have the y sound, y, y, ridiculous, ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short, uh, uh, ridiculous, ridiculous. The boy is trying to make the girl look ridiculous. He's ridiculing her, so he's trying to make her look ridiculous. Let's practice. Is he trying to make her look ridiculous? That's right. He's trying to make her look ridiculous. It's not nice. So remember, we have a lot of different spelling patterns to make the sound ool, and sometimes yule. And we also learned how to identify the dark L from the light L, and how to pronounce it correctly. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.